Let's start off with your name. What's your name? Janice. Janice Aldrich. Ooh. Janice is spelled J A N I S, right. not J A N I C E. That is the French. Oh. That is correctly said Janice. When it got over to America, they cut it off and made I-S, which is Janice. Interesting. Jan is, Jan's not on ice. <laughs> That's a good way to remember it. So, I heard that you were an RN. No, LPN. LPN. Um, what exactly is an LPN. I'm not very good with medical terminology. Is it medical? Now you're going to have to talk up. Um, I'm deaf. What exactly is an LPN? An LPN? Yes, ma'am. Uh, she is a nurse, but she is not trained to do everything that a registered nurse does. Okay. She works below and in cooperation with a registered nurse. Okay. Um, so what would be some of the typical things an LPN would do? We start IVs. Okay. We pass medications. Uh, we do everything, basically, except we came from more of a patient care okay. aspect, hands-on. RNs came from mostly IVs, uh, technical, that sort of stuff, yeah. all the paperwork, and they can do procedures such as help place pacemakers and surgery and that sort of stuff that we LPNs don't do more in depth. Okay. Um, I also heard that you were once an advanced EMT. Um, could you talk about that? An advanced EMT starts IVs and intubates. Okay somebody who is having severe problems breathing. Okay. Um, I was an EMT for 25 years and I was a nurse for 35 years. 35 years? 35 years a wow. nurse. What made, what made you want to become a nurse? I just always, I wanted to become a fireman. Really? Really. And I looked into it and everything else. And that was at a time in history when women were just starting to look around at other professions, but really hadn't looked so deeply into men's, like a fireman, you know. And my mother went, now good girls don't do things like that. And I had a talk with the fire chief and he said, I have no doubt that you couldn't pass the tests required to become a fireman, but we wouldn't be able to allow you the time to put on the ladies things for you to get run and get out in the truck. And I said, well, I'll just wear them to bed. When I run squad, that's exactly what I do. And he says, you have an answer for everything, don't you? And I said, yeah. And he looked at me and he said, please, don't be the first lady firefighter 
I don't want to be the chief that has the first lady firefighter. So my second love was nursing because it, it was a way for me to give back everything that had been given to me. I had a wonderful childhood, uh, greatest parents, and I just felt like I, I owed to give something back. So I went into nursing. And I went into LPN instead of RN because they had more hands-on than RNs. RNs did paperwork. <laughs> I had hands-on giving a bath, getting them up, helping them walk in the hall. You know, that was the kind of stuff I wanted. I didn't want to do paperwork and that sort of thing. I wish now that I would have become an RN because my health failed me and I never finished my education. Why didn't you finish your education? Because I had two strokes two heart attacks, two bypass surgeries, and the doctor told me the stress of trying to work full time, and working full time and going to school would probably kill me. So he told me just to accept myself for what I have, and run with it. Don't try to go any further because it would be very detrimental to me. So I stopped where it was. So I never obtained my alternate goal. Wow. That hurt. But I accepted it for what it was worth. So I went into teaching EMTs. You, ta you taught EMTs? I taught. How long? 10, 12 years. Wow. I taught police officers, CPR and first aid out of the police academy through Owens Community College. I was certified to teach in three joint vocational schools. Uh, geez. I was a lecturer. I spoke at uh, different uh, seminars of EMS and things where they're going, you know, where it's going. I was the first woman vice president of the state EMS association. Really? And in 1991, I was chosen as the national EMT paramedic of the year. That's amazing. By a Braun Ambulance Service and EMS National Magazine. I got three days in Florida <laughs> and uh, was, was uh, given an award and $500 and it was quite a uh, just kind of just took me off my feet. I started programs for EMTs about being uh, if a woman if a woman forget that if a patient should uh, come with a communicable disease 
the uh, EMT was notified that they could protect themselves and protect their families. They had to be contacted and uh, made aware of the situation so they could protect themselves and their family. Wow. Uh, I started continuing education programs. I started a program to inoculate uh, EMTs at no charge to themselves. Um, vaccinated them against hepatitis B um, so they would not get ill and pick up the hepatitis B uh, bug um, and lose everything they had because they volunteered and got sick off of somebody else. So I tried to make their life for volunteering and getting nothing. I tried to make their life a little easier. What do you think is your biggest achievement in life? My achievement in life? Your biggest one. Having two beautiful daughters that I loved or that I love dearly raising them and seeing them grow up and have a good sense of worth and placement and being a strong woman. Did did you and your two daughters live here in Tiffin? I lived in Finley okay. until my health slipped so bad. And I had nobody else in Finley. Okay. And I needed something or if I got bad, the girls would have to drive from Tiffin. So I sold everything in Finley and I moved to the Sean so I would be closer to them. Okay. And that has worked out very well. The Sean is a wonderful place and I'm very happy there. I'm glad to hear. Um, so one last question. Um, before we wrap up the interview, um, I was told that you were around when the Vietnam War was going on. Um, can you share with me your uh, perspective in history from that time? What? Uh, when you were around, when the Vietnam War was going on. Vietnam War? Mm -hmm. I married a Vietnam War vet. Okay. In fact, he was a drill instructor. That was not an easy thing to do. <laughs> In fact, the first year we were married, he tried to kill me three times. He thought that I was a Viet Cong. He would roll over on top of me and take his robe his bath robes string and pull it between his hands and say, you goddamn Viet Cong, I'm going to kill you. And I had to knee him in a place where you do not knee a gentleman just to get him off of me because he was 6'5" and around 2.25 and he would grab himself and fall off of me and I would run through the apartment to the kitchen and start the cold water and take the glass by the sink 
and just throw cold water in his face until I finally woke him up. And then he would go, I didn't. And I would say, yes, you did. And then he would just sink to his knees and start to cry because he knew what he did. We had malaria bouts to deal with, which were not easy. And the night that uh, Saigon, I think it was, fell to the north, uh, he was an auxiliary officer and been put up in the cruiser putting his time in. I went outside and I told him uh, about it. And he came inside and sat down and I've never seen anybody cry that hard. He said all of those men died for nothing because he lost so many men. So I went through it firsthand with the Vietnam vet and it was very, very hard. It was hard on him and hard on me, especially the uh, malaria attacks because he would get so confused. I would have to barricade the doors and everything else so he didn't get out and wander. And it was just sad. So sad. But it made us closer. How did, how did the both of you meet? How we now? How you both met. How we both been? Um, met. Uh, met? How, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Sorry. He worked for the local ambulance service, and I was a nurse in the emergency room. Okay. And the guy that owned the ambulance service said, Oh, let me introduce you. Jan, this is Bill. Bill, this is Jan. Why don't you two get something going? Seven months later, we were married. <laughs> <laughs> Seven months? How, how long were you two married? Uh, we were married one week shy of our 22nd wedding anniversary. Wow. That's amazing. Unfortunately, the marriage turned abusive, and I got out. Okay. I had no other choice. Well, thank you for this interview. Oh, you're very welcome.